Hey, what's going on, YouTube? Right before the show, I would like to give a special shout out to our sponsors, Ruby's Popcorn Expressions and more. Yes, that's Ruby's Popcorn Expressions and more. If you like infused and twisted flavors and popcorn, trust me, you do not want to miss Miss Ruby's Popcorn Expression and more. Oh my God, she has everything you can think of and more. I'm talking about cheddar cheese bacon, garlic cayenne, Hennessy pure white. I said Hennessy pure white. Yes, Tupac would love that. Banana pudding, watermelon, grape, and my personal favorite, praline. Oh, but wait, there's more. If you are interested in any type of other flavors, go to the website or call a number and put in an order. She'll ship anywhere in America, in hell, in the world. Once again, that's Ruby's Popcorns and Expressions and more. Thank you to our sponsors. Let's continue with the show. Monsters will never be the Huxtables. We'll meet the Masters. They have a whole family of them. TJ's a warlock. My daughter's a witch. Then what's your thing? I'm a sorcerer. It's a comedy premiere for the entire family. <laughs> okay, so we're a little bit strange. Sunday. What it do? What's going on? This is your brother Bishop of Bishop Zone TV. In this episode, I'm going to be a little lighthearted. I ain't going to come with the controversy. My channel is not all about controversy. It's just here to have a good time, make some observations, and, and, and make sure the world goes round and around with these beautiful faces, smiles, and all that good stuff. And today, I wanted to talk about a pilot that I just discovered. Now, a pilot is uh, it's basically a, a premise for a show. It's a show... That, hey, if it gets uh, good feedback from the audience, then that pilot can become a show. And this pilot that I'm speaking on is called A Little Bit Strange. Yeah, A Little Bit Strange. Have y'all ever heard of this? Because this is the first time I ever heard of this. And I was blown away. A Little Bit Strange, which came out in 1989. Yes, April 23rd, 1989 on NBC, if I'm not mistaken. Now, let me break down the synopsis for y'all. A comedy pilot about a sorcerer who has a family of witches and monsters. Which is not bad. That's good. That's cool. That's dope. Ben Masters is faced with the challenging task of hiding this fact from his fiance. How did he even get that far with a, a woman to call his fiance and he didn't know she didn't know anything about his family but anyway his family includes an ageless mother who reads minds that's pretty interesting um, I, I don't have anything against that a daughter who is a witch cool a son who is a warlock and speaks in rap poetry uh, now this is 1989 y'all NBC speaks in rap poetry a son who was created from mud what the fuck and an uncle who turns into a bat flies around and sings James Brown songs. Y'all. Okay, okay. Now, y'all saw the clip. The clip didn't seem that bad. But when you read the synopsis, you probably can understand why this did not turn into a TV show. First of all, I can tell you right off the bat that this show probably was created by white people. And again, I don't want to make it seem like every uh, show that I do is about white people, but this is some white shit because a, a, a rapping warlock and an uncle who turns into a bat and just sings James Brown songs all the time. Like, come on. I, I could just picture probably that pilot. Say it loud. I'm bat and I'm proud. With all that noise. I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure they had a I'm bat and I'm proud moments lying up in there. This was in the 80s, y'all. Now, what's fascinating about this show that never that never premiered or never aired was it actually had some pretty like legendary uh, actors in our community. Now, I don't know if you guys are familiar. Well, I shouldn't say you. You good know. You know Michael Warren. 
an esteemed actor. He was the father in the film. Vanessa Bell Calloway, she was the fiance. Yes, Vanessa Bell Calloway. Myra J, I believe she was the uh, mother. Yes. Um, Sean Ski, I guess he was, uh, I don't know who he was. I'm sorry, I apologize, Sean Ski. Um, also, you had Cherry Johnson. Y'all know Cherry Johnson now. If you grew up in the 80s and in the 90s, you knew, you know who Cherry Johnson was. I actually had a crush on Cherry Johnson back when she was on Family Matters. She was Laura's best friend. And she was also on Punky Brewster. Yes, legendary actress, Cherry Johnson. And one particular actor that piqued my interest that was on this show was none other than one of my favorite comedians of all time, Martin Lawrence. Yeah, Martin. Yeah, I guess he was the warlock rapping son. Yeah, Martin Lawrence was in the show. And I got to say, man, uh, the premise is, while interesting, it, it was it was ahead of its time, first and foremost, because I'm pretty sure this was around the time when Cosby was really like the only representation that we had on TV at the time. They even put it in there and say, look, this is this ain't the Cosby. Woogity woogity boogity, nigga. You know, so so yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure, you know, when uh the test audience saw this, they were like, nah, nah, this 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 not good. And but but so I, I've been I've been looking, I've been searching, I've been trying to find a pilot episode on the internet somewhere, and it is, it has been scrubbed completely off the face of the earth. Um, the only thing I could find actually was this comment from a YouTuber who I guess he actually saw the episode at the time. Um, let's see, brother goes by Diesel Williams. I guess he's in the industry. Uh, he's some type of entertainer. Um, Y'all go check his YouTube video out. You know, he actually had a clip playing in the background of this um, pilot episode. And for some reason, he had a shirt off, brother. I mean, hey, come on now, brother. You could have put a shirt on. Like, why are you trying to... He trying to seduce people with um, a little bit of strange in the background. Like, come on, brother. Come on, man. I'm just joking. Though. Shouts out to you. So he explained why this pilot never became an actual show. So he goes on to say, um, Cherry's ex explanation about the black church folks stopping the show sounds good. And in, this, and in this day and age, she knows you eat this type of theory up. I guess somebody was trying to say the church folks saw it and didn't like it. So they ran with 227. Shine that light on me. Okay, so, but anyway, the episode was corny, 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 cornish. It was the black, it wasn't the black church that said no. I was there. Everybody said no. Hell no. It was looked at like a shucking job show with singing bats and sunglasses, singing James Brown. Martin's character acting like the dumb hip hop boy stereotype made from a pile of mud, which, yeah, a pile of mud. Why? Come on now. Why, why would a goddamn witch make a son out of mud? I know it's a, I know I'm supposed to have some type of, uh, of disbelief of reality. But come on now. That just don't make no goddamn sense. The son doing dance moves and spins every chance he could get and rhyming his com and commands like a mini dolomite. Abracadabra. Ho suck my dick of the brabra. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> and Vanessa's character making scared buckwheat style faces when Sherry cast spells. Oh my God. She was making them buckwheat faces. I mean, you, you know white folks made this. This was 1989, the Spike Lee NWA Public Enemy, A Different World Era. Black people didn't want to see black people in cheesy pop sitcom with cheesy special effects. This was like a lower budget Captain EO or Rem Lazar, and that's why black people didn't like it and never saved it or spoke about it. Calm down with blaming the church. The show was lame. This is what they said. This is what he said. So, yeah, if, if, if you got a, 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 a yo, 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 abracadabra, son, shiami, 
you got that going on. Plus a bat with a perm singing, please, please. Yeah, of course that shit is gonna is gonna flop. But I'll say this. Premise, just based off the premise, I think this show could work today. Why can't this show work today? Let's just cut out all the coonery, hire some black writers, filmmakers, and make a show, maybe put it on put it on like HBO Max about a about a about a family of wizards, black family of wizards and shows. And, and I don't know, man, maybe have it like set in New Orleans. You know? Maybe set it in New Orleans or whatever. And or, or you know what? Make the father th- this family is from like uh during the times of slavery and uh they practice of uh, Voodoo. And we're not making it like this uh satanic spiritual belief system. It's it's an actual spiritual belief system based in Africa, one of the oldest spiritual belief systems in the globe. So let's let's add some truth to it. But also add some humor to it and, and maybe make the family from like, um, you know, like I said, during the slavery times and the mother and father, maybe the mother passed away or something. Maybe she got burned at the at the in, in Salem. They, maybe they took a trip to Salem or some shit and then it went haywire. And so he's been trying to find his lost love. and He finds this new woman, you know, and he has to introduce her to the family and whatnot. And, you know, then she's like, oh, my God, you the witches, they really do exist. Oh, oh geez. Oh, oh God. Oh, oh hell no. Uh, she might be like yes or something I don't know I'm just rambling at this point but I think it could work and being that I do screenwriting maybe I should create this show a little bit strange maybe make it a little bit strange lit strange I don't know but let me know what you think do you think they should redo this show Make it a whole entire different show or leave it alone. And you know what? Maybe it's a good thing that this pilot never became a legitimate sitcom. Because had it been legitimate, we would have never got the best sitcom of all time. Yes, I'm talking about Martin, the greatest show of the 90s. If, and if it ain't the greatest, it's, just, it's, it's easily top five. Don't don't argue with me, you uh, Gen Zs, you younger millennials who think Jamie Foxx is better than Martin Lawrence. No, shouts out to Jamie, but he ain't, he ain't touching no Martin. Yeah. So um, in this case, uh, white executives racism. Thank you. It actually worked in our favor because we were blessed with Martin. So until next time. Like and subscribe. Holla at your brother. Get at me.